Brightspace has a powerful, flexible gradebook that can be used for your course. This tutorial shows you how to build one from scratch. The first thing you should do is create an overall grade scheme on paper using either a word processor, a spreadsheet, or even simply paper and pencil. Think of the various items you will use for assessment and then categorize them in a way that makes sense. The screen shows a sample. The students will do five kinds of things. Written assignments, labs, presentations both live and recorded, online discussions, and exams. There will be two written assignments, both of equal value and having a combined weight of 30% of the final grade. Now, this doesn't have to be the case. You can assign whatever weight you want to any item. Next, there will be five labs. I am thinking about having five, but want to leave open the possibility of adding more if needed. I will make them all weigh the same. Now, as shown, with 5 having a combined value of 15, the math is easy. Suppose, though, that I decide to add more. Now, the math won't be quite so intuitive. No worries. As you will see in a few minutes, there's a way in which I can set it so that all the labs will be worth the same, and I will let Brightspace take care of the arithmetic. There will be two presentations. One will be done in class and will be worth 12 marks, and the other will be recorded and will be an individual submission. It's worth noting that the gradebook doesn't care whether it's a group or an individual submission. Later, when entering grades, I can select multiple students and assign them the same grade if they belong to the same group and if I decide to assign them the same grade. Also, if I link this grade book item to a group based assignment folder, I can assign multiple members the same grade that way. Note that group based assignment folders are covered in another tutorial. There are two separate items for participation one with four points for creating a question and one with six points for responding to six questions posed by others. Last, there are two types of exams, a midterm worth 10 points and a final worth 15 points. Before moving on, Take note of the fact that I have been careful to ensure that the weights of the individual items sum to 100. This makes the math easier to follow. If I hadn't done that and instead made the points sum, say, to 120, Brightspace would scale the final grade accordingly to be out of 100, not 120. Now let's get to work and use this information to set up a Brightspace Gradebook. Click Assessment and then select Grades. Because this is a new course, Brightspace will start with the Setup Wizard, which will prompt you to review and possibly modify the default settings. You can see some of them on screen now. I will scroll down to see more. And now, you can see the rest of the settings. In this case, most of them are fine, and you will probably choose to leave most of them unchanged, but let's run the wizard to see what it's like. You can choose to assign a grade out of 100, or give one based on the number of points obtained, and you can set that number. We will stick with the weighted grade, and we click Continue. 
You can, if you wish, choose to keep a running tally of the grade obtained and have it automatically updated. It is, however, recommended that you stick with the default, which is not to show the calculated final grades in Brightspace. You may, for example, encounter something unforeseen and have to manually intervene to adjust the final grade. If this is the case, then it may be problematic to have students constantly viewing a running tally. As you will see later, even though we will keep the adjusted final grade as the one displayed, we will also set it so that only you as instructor can see it. Final grades, which will be imported from the adjusted final grade column, will be transmitted to the students through the banner system instead of through Brightspace. You can choose to either ignore ungraded items or treat them as zeros. The choice you make depends on your overall setup. Suppose you plan to assign labs but are not sure of how many you will get done, so you arbitrarily choose to make room for five in the gradebook. If you leave the settings as is, then any labs that have no grades entered will be treated as zeros. If, however, you choose to drop the ungraded items, then Brightspace will scale the overall grade appropriately, allowing for the missing points from the missing work, so that it will still be out of 100. I will leave it as it is for now. But the fact is that in most instances, I do choose to drop on graded items. This makes it easier to make allowances for students who have valid reasons for not submitting work. Again, I click Continue. There is only one available grade scheme for our instance of Brightspace, so we simply click through this screen. You can decide how many decimal places to display in grade calculations. I will leave it at 2, as this is useful when deciding which way to round grades. The students will not see this. We will leave the weighted grade space available. Note that this will only display an empty column and will only show the values if you decide to release the grades and as noted, only whole number values will be displayed. This is the last group of settings, and I scroll down to see the rest of the settings. Everything looks good, so I click Finish. Now it's time to create the gradebook structure. Before I do that, let me point out the two important view layouts for your gradebook. This one, Enter Grades, is for when your gradebook is set up. Here, you can enter the marks for any particular assessment or switch to a spreadsheet view to enter the grades right across the gradebook. You can also use this view to take an overall look at student achievement throughout the semester. And then there's this layout. Manage Grades is the view designed for creating and modifying the structure of your gradebook. As such, it's the right choice for the job at hand. I will click it to continue. The blue button labeled New is all we need. I will click and see what we can add. There are two things on it. A category is an overall organizer. Quizzes, labs, and assignments are all examples of categories. Items refer to individual assessments. If, for example, your course had three assignment submissions and two quizzes, then each assignment submission and each quiz would be an item. The first 
is calculated by the system. The final adjusted grade can be made up of what's in the calculated grade or you may choose to alter it manually. Either way, both are hidden from the students and are only visible to you as instructor. You can change this and make them visible to the students. This is one of the things you can do in the More Actions section. It is recommended that you do not change this setting. At the end of the semester you will instead use the built-in tool that transfers your final adjusted grade to the university's own reporting system. There are two logical ways to proceed. One is to create a category, add the grade items for that category, then do the next category, add the items, and continue until you are finished. The other is to create the overall structure using the categories and then add the items after the structure is complete. I recommend this approach as it tends to result in a more orderly structure and better yet it tends to make the math easier to follow. I shall click Category to proceed. Here's the screen that appears. Now we are ready to begin. I will enter things like the name as well as how much the category is worth towards the final grade as well as choosing whether to let each grade item be worth the same or to manually decide how much each is worth. The first category is Assignments. Short names are useful if your category has an overly long name. If you use long names, the spreadsheet may be crowded and very hard to read. If it's 15 characters or less, there's no need for shortening it. Assignments is fine as is. I will also enter the overall weight, which is 30% of the final grade. I will let all of the assignments be worth the same and will check here which distributes the weight evenly across the category. If, for example, I have two, then the system knows each is worth 15% of the grade. If, on the other hand, I have six, then the system will adjust it so that it is 5% of the grade. This can be a real time saver for you if all the assignments are similar. The assignments category is now done, but there are more categories to add. I will choose Save and New to do the next one. The next category is Labs. No need for a short title. They will be worth 15% of the final grade, so I ensure that is the number here and I will choose to let them all be worth the same, so I will check this box. Now, for the next category, so I click Save and New. And I will start entering the information for Presentations. Once again, there's no need for a short title. The presentations are worth a total of 20% of the final grade, but they are not worth the same, as you may recall. I will check here and will manually adjust the weights a little later on when I add the individual grade items. And I press Save and New. And now on to Participation in Online Discussion. This time, a short name is necessary. The two grade items for participation have different values, so once again I check Manually Assign Weights. 
and click Save and New to move on. The last category is Exams. Once again, there's no need for a short name. Exams are worth 25% of the final grade, so I type that in. Since the midterm and the final have different weights, I also manually assign it. And since this is the last category, I click Save and Close this time. Now we are back to the main Manage Grades screen. Notice that the system has identified numerous errors. This is because there are no grade items in any of the categories that need manual assignment of the grades. I will address that when I add the items. Let's start that now. And once again click New. This time, I select Item, Eric, so I will choose that. I will begin with Assignment 1. That title is maybe a little long. Recall, it needs to show up in a spreadsheet. For grade items, it's important to keep the names as short as you can, without them being too cryptic. I'll go with ASSN1 for the short name. Next, I choose which category it belongs to. I choose Assignments. It's worth pointing out that failure to select a category for a gradebook item is an error that happens a lot. It results in a gradebook that doesn't add up and it can be a little frustrating sometimes to troubleshoot. Near the end of this part of the tutorial, I will make that mistake and show you the error it gives as well as how to resolve it. For now, I will keep doing it right. I will choose to grade the assignments out of 15 points instead of 10 and will enter that. That's assignment one done. I will now click Save and New to do the next. I choose Numeric as always. Now let's do Assignment 2. I'll give it a name and a short name. Use the drop arrow and ensure that I have added it to the right category. Change the points to 15 and click Save and New. Numeric for the labs starting with Lab 1. I've used the drop-down to associate it with the right category. Because I have chosen to distribute the weight evenly across all categories, notice how this one is now worth 100% of that category. Now I will hit Save and New and do the same for Lab 2. I have now entered the name and chosen the category. Notice that now that there are two labs, each lab is worth 50% of the value assigned to this category. Watch what happens when I click Save and New and quickly add Lab 3 the same way. Now Lab 3 is entered and now it's worth 33.3% or one-third of the weight. You can see here the advantage of distributing the weight evenly across all the items in the category. As you add or remove items from the category, the system keeps the math up to date for you. You see the same thing when I add the rest of the labs. And when I get to the last one, the value is now 20% of the value of the category, which makes sense because there are now five labs, each worth 20% of what the category is worth. Now it's on to presentations. I choose Numeric. And I will start by entering the title for the first presentation. 
Since the title is long, I will enter a shorter one. I use the drop down and choose the Presentations category. Since I decided earlier that the presentation is worth overall 12% of the final grade, I am making it easy on myself and letting it be graded out of 12 points. I do not have to do this. I can mark it out of however many points I want, and the system will take care of the math. I do have to be careful here, though. Recall that I said it was worth 12% of the final grade. I have to convert that to a weight of the category. Here's the math. It's 12 points out of 100, but I need that 12 as a fraction of the 20% assigned to the 20 points for this category. So I find out what percentage is 12 out of 20. If I divide 12 by 20, I get 0 0.6, which is 60%. And that's what I enter for the weight. Note here that if the first assignment is worth 60% of the category, then the second one must be the remaining 40%. I'll redo this anyway when I do the next assignment. I will click Save Anew to do that. Assignment 2 is numeric, like all the others. I'll start with the name. Because it's long, I went with a short name. You may recall that I decided early on that the video presentation would be worth 8% of the final grade. I decided to mark it out of 8 points, but not because I had to. It could have been anything. To be honest, I did it mainly so I'd recall what it was worth. Now I have to enter the weight and get it right. Recall that the other assignment was worth 60% of the weight of the category. Subtracting 60 from 100 leaves 40, and that's one way to calculate the value. The second is to recall that it's worth 8% of the final. So 8% divided by the 20% of the category is 0.4 or 40%. Now we will do the next grade item. It's numeric. This one will be posts to discussion forums. Recall that the students have to post one question, so that's what I will call the grade item. Because it's long, I will also give it a short name. It's worth 4% of the final grade, so to make it easy on myself, I will choose to grade it out of 4. Because the participation is worth a total of 10, I divide 4 by 10 and get 0.4 or 40% which is the weight this value has. This means that the remaining grade item for the category must be worth 60%. Let's do that one now. It's numeric. This is the item where they have to respond to six questions. I have given it a name and a short name. There are many ways I can assign a value to this. Perhaps I may simply count posts and give one point for each post regardless of their quality. Alternatively, I could look at the posts and find a way to grade the overall out of six points. And as before, I don't have to grade it out of six. I could, for example, grade it out of 60 and look at each post and give each post a grade out of 10 and then total them, for example. Given the number of assessments I'd have to make, I think that's asking too much. I'd probably just keep it simple. I will set the weight at 60% for this category. Now for the last two items. Both are in the exams category. This time I will make a little error somewhere in the process and show you how to fix it. First, the midterm. No need for a short name. 
I'm grading this exam out of 100 points. That's my choice, and it depends on the instrument I create. In this case, it would likely be a test with 40 multiple choice each worth one point, and then an essay section with various questions making up the other 60 points. It can be whatever you want. As previously mentioned, the system will then convert it to a grade out of 10, which is what we decided early on would be the way towards the final grade. Now, I need to consider what the weight is of the category. It's 10 out of a total of 25. Since this is worth 10% of the final grade and the category is 25% of the final grade, 10 divided by 25 is a 0 0.4, or 40%. And that is what I enter for the weight. And now for the final. I start with the name. No short name is needed. As before, I will make this one worth 100 points, probably with a similar format. And since it's worth 15 points, I calculate the weight by dividing 15 by 25 and I get 60%. Now I move on. But before I do, did you notice that I made a mistake? What was it? It's right here. I did not assign this grade item to a category. I will click Save and Close. Let's see what happens. But there are two errors. See, they're right here. Something is not right, as you can see. The system has identified these. Let me scroll down for a better look at the gradebook structure. Can you see the issue? It's right here. Final is not under the exams category. And as such, it is adding many extra points to the final total while leaving the exams category short. I need to fix this. One way is to delete the existing final grade item and do it all over again. There's an easier way though. All I have to do is click right on the grade item or click the drop down next to it and choose edit. That brings me here back at the settings page for the grade item. I scroll to find the category drop down and then select exams instead of none and then I click save and close and now we are back to the manage grade screen and there are no error messages. That's it. This grade book is now ready for use. Now it's your turn. Other tutorials in this series show how the gradebook can be used in conjunction with the assignments folders. If you link assignments folders to the gradebook, then grades will be automatically entered for you. And the same applies to quizzes.